Hello, I'm Dr. George Machaki, and we welcome to Chapter 13 or Session 16, uh, Changing Organizational Behavior. And this is from an organizational behavior uh, perspective if I'm a consultant or business owner uh, or a manager and I want to change the culture of my department or my company if I'm looking at a strategic plan. So you're either taking me for an online class, a face-to-face -face class, a hybrid class, or you're in one of my uh, uh, workshops. Okay, so let's get started here. We're going to be using the concept maps. You're always available to the concept maps if you're in any of my uh, uh, paid-for uh, classes. Otherwise, you could request for a concept map. I'd be uh, more than willing to send it to you. Okay, so here's what to do. Forces of change. Why do companies want to change? You have external forces, technological advancements, customer and market changes, uh, social, political pressures, you know, the government, new rules and regulations, technology. Now, if I'm looking at a lot of uh, organizations, we're talking to customers. We used to uh, just talk basically through email or anything else. Now we're talking through Skype. We're talking through FaceTime. If you're using an Apple product uh, you know, or an uh, iPhone or a, a tablet, each has its uh, uh, strengths and each has its weaknesses. We have new technologies. It's always changing changing how we do business, so we have to adjust. So forces a change external uh, uh, make us. Our customers likes and dislikes about our product, or a new competitor comes in. We have to adjust because that competition is providing a service or something that's not uh, that we're not, or there's new laws and regulations that I have to have this uh, 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 embedded into my process and how do I change the old culture and say we, you know, uh, I'm teaching at uh, several colleges and one of the biggest things that's coming out there's no more smoking not only smoking in, on the college campus that means any college campus students are not allowed to even smoke in their cars and say that's my private car nope you could get uh, a ticket I don't know what the policies are but that's a new law that's coming into effect uh, January 15th for all uh, uh, state run schools there's no smoking at all anywhere on their facilities Okay, eternal. <coughs> now, this uh, generates within the organization. I get low job satisfaction, so I'm doing a reorganization. I'm doing uh, uh, empowering my employees more, uh, providing them with more tools, technological tools. I have a high turnover. Why is they turning over? Maybe I have to have more of a flexibility in my uh, processes. Maybe I should have more flexibility under time. So those are all organizational changes within the thing. Conflict, just conflict between two departments. Why is there a conflict? Maybe because it's a goal conflict. We're all trying to achieve the goals, but we're using the same resources, so we have to, we're not playing nicely or uh, sharing that resources to achieve the goals, even though we have individual con uh, uh, goals, but we're using the same tool. Uh, management pressure. There's more pressure on management to be more effective and more efe efficient, so that means I have to change some of the procedures or the way we're doing work. So now I'm changing the work process, whether it's a service, how I deal with customers, or whether it's a manufacturing process. And then we got the organizational culture. We're bringing in a new, younger uh, type of employee. We're bringing in a new, diverse employee that uh, the old culture is not used to. So they're thinking differently. Do we have two different mindsets? We had to find a new mindset that I'm taking from the old and from the new and from a diverse workforce, and now we're forming a new organizational culture going forward. How do I bring the new employees to adjust? How do I uh, uh, help the older employees or the employees, the uh, employees within my process to uh, adjust and still achieve the organizational goal by just working at it a little bit differently? So those forces are there constantly. Most organizations, what you're going to find out uh, uh, through this whole chapter and through this whole uh, lecture, is organizations that survive are what we call learning organization. That means we're adapted slowly. Look, you see the change. Don't wait till there's a massive change. We have to do it. We change slowly as we see the change coming. So when the change actually comes in through uh, either through legislation or through technology, our employees are trained. They're effective, they're efficient, and they enjoy the change. Okay, this change is better for the organization. It means I could have my job longer. It makes the company more profitable. I have profit sharing. It means I uh, uh, reap out of some of the profits. Okay, so now this one model here, if I'm looking at Ludwig's uh, chain model, it's a model that's out there, and let's look at this way. Look at this as an ice cube. An ice cube, if I want to change, I first have to, you know, I've got all these ice cubes. Now I'll go through the process. But I just want to give you an analogy how you should look at this chain. An ice cube. I got a tray of ice cube. They're square. My, you know, and I've got, let's say I made some fruit punch or something else, so the fruit punch ice cube. But now my son, my grandson, wants 
Mickey Mouse ice cubes. Oh man, I don't want to throw this out. There's nothing wrong with it. So what do I do? I unfreeze it first. So now I've got just a liquid. The benchmarking is the new Mickey Mouse model or the, where I want to go. Okay, and I pour it into that new model and then I refreeze it and now I have the new ice cube. In a, in a nutshell, this is what Ludwin's change model. You first have to unfreeze. Focus is to create motivation to change. So why do I want to change? Begin by disconfirming the usefulness or appropriateness of employees' present behavior. So what I'm looking at is saying, okay, we've done it this way and it's always worked in the past. But because of our customer's demand, because of the new regulation, because of the technology, I can't use the old software because there's no more updates. Here's the new version. I have to learn the new version, and that'll make me more uh, productive. So I first have to convince or let my employees know why I'm changing. I'm not changing just for change. I'm changing because it's survival, because the external forces or the internal forces are creating a change, a need for me to change. Okay, so we look at that. So now we understand it, and we're unfreezing it. So people said, okay, I understand the old does not work well with the new, so what do I have to do to change? Now I do the benchmarking. Process by which a company compares itself to performance of the high-performing company. I benchmark because this new competitor is offering this to our clients with this new software. They're using the iPhone. They're using Facebook. They're using uh, uh, the smartphones as part of the whole process of uh, integrating, communicating with the customers. So I have to change and my employees have to be able to change because of what my competitors doing external forces if i want to stay in competition my uh, I, and keep my current users or customers so they don't transfer over i'm changing so that's what my or it's my employees what's my employees they have more flex time they're giving my employees more time to uh, uh, uh utilize social media for the benefit of the organization i'm gonna say nobody's on the smartphone they got them on there let's utilize it to make it something that could bring customers in. So if I have a YouTube uh, or I have some kind of Twitter account, some employees may Twitter working for the organization but using that software, uh, uh, which normally I might have said, no, that's not allowed, but I have no choice now because this is what my customers want. They want that instant feedback 24-7. This is what uh, 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 my competition is doing to draw new, younger individuals into their process. I've trained them. I don't want them to leave. They're good employees. You know, the bad employees take the door out. The good employees is what I'm striving for. And 80% of my employees are good, but they don't want, I don't want them to change on the other one. So now changing. Can change can be uh, applied at improvement of growth. Can focus on solving problems such as poor customer service. <coughs> or low productivity. That's why we're changing. That's the model. Okay, so here's why we're changing. Here's the rationale. Now I understand the need for the change. I've accepted that. I put in the processes. I put in the systems. I put in the technology. I brought in the new individuals. Now we've gotten the change. And so what I do after everyone's set up, remember, I pour that uh, water into the new mold. This is the new perimeters. This is the new uh, policies. This is the new direction the organization is going. We're being more customer focused. We're being more employee focused. We want the morale and employees to be higher up. We're looking at retention, whatever. There's the need for the change, and then I basically re uh, refreeze it. I take the change, stabilize it by helping employees integrate the change into new behaviors or attitude into the normal way of doing a thing. So slowly I see the change. The new software is coming up. The old software is no longer available. I have to use the new software. Then I have training. Training reinforces it. I have meetings. How do you like it's going? I have uh, 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 I set up goals, objectives. We reached this one. Now we're doing better. And now everyone's trained. Everyone's happy with the new system and giving employees a chance to exhibit the new behaviors which they are reinforced. So now my goals and my, all my uh, objectives uh, for the reward system is utilizing new system effectively making less errors with the new system and now i basically incorporated that change into the process and voila i started from unfreezing the old telling them why the emotions the uh, reasons and i basically sh uh, put the new mold had the process in and i refreeze it by training and getting rid of the old and now they're in the new suit and the new uh, manners the new job description new job titles whatever it is and now they're focused and now i'm uh, productive again and i'm able to um, uh, uh, address the external and internal forces going forward
Eventually, I'll be changed. I say, hey, here's a change until the new technology changes. Maybe if I'm in an IT uh, business, my uh, uh, process changes. The individual got to be very flexible because there's constantly change. New ideas, new smartphones, new wearable things. How can I utilize this to make my employees uh, more effective? I may give them some gloves when they're typing to make sure, eh, warning, carpal tunnels coming in. Uh, you should be uh, uh, resting your hands now. That's all technology. It helps me to have a more productive employee. The, the, uh, the workforce say, hey, I like this change. Some changes they may not like. Other changes we have, you know, they may not like it, but we need it for survival going forward. Okay? So, how do I do uh, system changes? That's one of the biggest changes. Remember, I'm going through this process using Ludwin's uh, change model. He's going through the freezing, unfreezing, you know, benchmarking, and then refreezing system changes. If I'm looking at a system change, any change, no matter how large or small, has a cascading effect throughout the organization. So even if I change here, I've got other systems that are tied. Look at it as a process. Boom, boom. So all those are going to have some kind of uh, 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 need some kind of adjustment. Takes the big picture perspective of organizational change. Add age during the strategic planning process using the model as a diagnostic framework to determine the cause of organizational uh, problems to uh, and a purpose uh, for solution. That's the system change. I mean, everyone in the system, since they're utilizing the system, I change the system, inadvertently the individuals are going to uh, 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 adapt to that change because this is the system they're using. This is the new software. I got to talk to the customer. I got to report. I got to ask these questions. It's all in front of me. Okay? So now that's the system. Now the mission change summarizes why the organization exists. So we used to be where you had the top quality. We got quality product, and we forgot about the customer. Quality customers want. So now we're looking more focused, customer focused with quality product. So now I'm telling the customer our products are focused, not just because I got a quality product and hope the customer likes it. I changed the mission change, adjusted it, also uh, that will fall in line with the systems approach. Now, the strategic plan is long-term outlining actions needed to achieve the desired goal. So what's my goal? Improve customer satisfaction. So I go through the system, through the process, uh, through training, and it, go, it works all the way down. Okay? And that's my strategic, my long-term goal. And all employees understand that, or should, through the training. Targets of element change. I'm looking at what I'm saying. Components of an organization that may be changed. Some places are good. I don't change everything. Look, when I'm going in here, if I'm losing, I want to lose weight. I still like the way I dress. I still like the work. It's just I got to change my eating habits. So everything else is uh, the same. I'm just changing one aspect. Sometimes you have to do a major organizational change. It's just because that's the worst case. That means I got the whole do makeover. I change my hair. I do everything else in my eating. That's a drastic change, but sometimes it needs it. But remember, so I'm looking at organizational rearrangements. I'm looking at social factors, the social connections, the different departments. I'm looking at methods that I'm changing, and I'm looking at people. Some, some people may not want to change, so I offer them a buyout or, 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 or they leave the organization. I try to retrain them, re uh, uh, re focused them on a new culture, some don't like it, but Jordan will say, now I understand, I I understand, I have to know, you know, there's that big fear of what I'm afraid of, but the change, if I, if it's done properly, people, will I overcome their fears, because I know which ones, we'll talk a little bit later on how to overcome the uh, fears, okay, so that takes care of our uh, system changes, now steps to leading organizational change, remember, I'm freezing, I'm unfreezing, I got tough urgency, Sense of urgency. We're going to go bankrupt. We're going to go out of, uh, out of business. At least we start focusing on this element or we start using this process or we change this process or bring this new product line. Create a guiding coalition. So we have to say, uh, uh, here's a group of individuals, our experts from all workforce, and they're going to come up and help us manage this change. Develop a vision and a strategy. Communicate the change of vision to every level, even to the cleaning lady. Or even to the uh, you know, even our suppliers should know uh, all our stakeholders should know our change. Empower broad ba base action so everyone ha has an, a, 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 a portion or a part in making this change successful. Generate short term wins so I have small goals so we're changing slowly. Like just, just look at the diet. I can't lose fifty pounds all uh, all at once. I can't you know if I go on a hunger strike or, or just uh, eat and stop eating. That's not good in my body. So they say okay, lose ten pounds for the next ten weeks. Lose another 10 pounds, another 10 weeks. And so I slowly have those uh, uh, milestones that I uh, achieve. Consolidate uh, gains and produce more change. 
anchored new approaches into the culture, and then I have a handout uh, for Section 16 for more uh, on there, okay? So now I'll look at organizational development. Organizational development or organizational consultants, they a lot of times will come in and they'll have a set of techniques or tools they use to implement change, organizational change. No different if I'm losing weight. The dietitian has a process. Okay, here's what you do. Focus on there. So we're going to do a little bit of exercise. We're going to look at your uh, eating habits. We're going to look at your buying habits. We may uh, uh, say uh, try to eliminate this for a while or substitute something else. So now it's a set of tools. I don't care what company, what you know, whether it's a large company or you're just changing your department, you're changing your, your first line supervisor, you want to change the attitude of your workforce, your, your small team. It doesn't make a difference. You're going to the same process. It involves profound change, value added, uh, value uh, loaded. Always got to say, why are we doing this? Here's the value. You're going to be able to keep your job. You're going to be able to be more effective. You're going to reduce on the accident rate. If you start following this procedure first, it's, uh, don't take the shortcut. Or we used to do this, but let's look at it this way. It may be a, a one more step or eliminate two steps because it's too confusing. Whatever. You have to let them know, uh, uh, here's value into it. Diagnostic prescription cycle. So you're going to always diagnose each step of the chain to make sure it's effective for that work group. And if not, how do I tweak it? Process oriented, uh, organization development uh, interventions. You know, if I'm looking at this one, let me get rid of a uh, little table. Survey feedback for the people, process consult, uh, uh, consultants, team building, grouping teams. You know, I got a new chain, so people got new rules, new responsibilities. You got new faces. Remember, when you look at the stormy, dormy thing of uh, forming a team, now I've got the organization, the process different, so I got new players. Bring them together so they know each other and so they know how to help each other. What's the next handoff? Inner group development, many groups, uh, uh, techno structural activity. I've it's, it brought a new software. So I bring people from different groups and say, when you finish this, when you transfer the data, a lot of times I may not sell where it's going, it goes to this process group, and here's what they need. If you don't give them this, they can't do their, their job. Or if they uh, come in here, notify, hey, I, I like all this, but this information here is inadequate. You didn't update it, and it, uh, I had to deal with the customer, uh, and he or she was upset. So, you know, there's a communication. With the new process, what works, what doesn't work, why is it done, and you're educating people. So now they know why it's important. And the customer says, why do I need this? I need this data so when you do it to our uh, uh, billing or anything issue, they have this so they know how to contact you. Or if we have a problem with the product, when you register, we know where to deal with. You know, uh, organization development the research states, plan organizational changes works. It has to be planned, not haphazard. You have a plan, you have steps, you have milestones. More successful when they are geared towards meeting both short-term and long-term resorts. Short-term, so I say, okay, I can do this. You know, when I'm a runner, uh, I can't run the marathon if I can barely walk without running out of breath. So I take a little short step. I run maybe uh, uh, five, ten minutes, and they increase it to 20 minutes, and increase it to half an hour. Next thing, man, I'm doing miles of running. When a time, I hibernate, okay? Uh, effectiveness for or, uh, organization development uh, interventions is an effective by cross-cultural consideration. When I have the OD people, it has to be a representation of the workforce I'm doing so each one could put in their little twist what works in what culture, what works in another culture or a diverse workforce. You know, if I'm an accountant, I'm thinking differently than a market person. If I'm a person, individual that is also in, a, in marketing and accounting, he or she knows how to make those connections, those ties. What are those links that are similar that I can build on as a foundational uh, force going forward? So when you look at organizational change, you have some individuals are more adaptive or more better to uh, looking for change. Now, the biggest thing, why do people resist any kind of change? First, surprise. I think, oh, here it is. An individual predisposition towards change. I can't do this. I'm afraid to do this. Try to, try to, if you have kids, try to try this food. I don't like it. Why? I just don't like it. I don't know why. It just doesn't look right. Everyone says, don't like carrot. But once they taste it, it's not too bad. So I kind of enhance some, you know, 
surprise and fear of the unknown. We don't know what's coming up in the change. Here's what the change is going to go. You give them an overview picture, maybe not all the details, so they could see where I'm heading. You know, after you lose the weight, you can feel healthier, you look more uh, uh, better, you have more energy, it's better for your health, your diet, your uh, sh uh, sugar count is lower, you don't have to worry about your high blood pressure, because you could, instead of taking medication, you could do it through exercises and changing your food, and you could lower that, uh, uh, or your cholesterol, whatever. You see me? So now I know why I'm doing it, and I can see the ultimate goal. Climate of mistrust. A lot of times management does changes. Well, I know better, and and it's okay. A lot of people, you see people losing their job. They're not really losing their job. They're being reassigned to other workforces, or I'm retraining them. So there's got to be some trust between, uh, between management and the company. Fear of failure. We all are afraid to fail. You take a new class. Oh, I don't know if I could do this. When I bring a new software, oh my God, it's so much different than the other one. What if I do do well? I lose my job. So you're going to say, hey, we'll trade you. Trading will overcome this fear of, uh, of failure. But you got to train them effectively and have feedback and individuals that are doing the same task and say, look, I have learned this. In the corporate world, I used to work on different software. Off the thing, they said George could use this. First, the software has to make an application. That yeah, let's buy software for the lack of uh, just for change. I look at the software. Does it make sense for my process, my application? Yes. Then I basically, if I can learn the software, I'm the one trading other people. Look, I'm not a techie by any means. I'm a plug and play guy. But I could. Uh, uh, here's how it works. Out. Here's the shortcomings. Here's where you should look out for. And they say, hey, George does this, and he learned it. And look at his age. I could also learn it. Loss of status of job security. And that's sometimes you have to say. Sometimes the job may change, but I'll keep your wages. And you may not have the same status, but uh, I have to readjust because we're a leaner, meaner organization. That's something uh, people may not like, but you still have a job. You have a new skill set, so you're still good for the next five years until uh, uh, environmental forces or your job is eliminated. And now technology is replacing it, but we still need that person. So you've got this skill set. Now you just got to hone in on what used to be a minor job is going to be your major job now because the minor, uh, your major job is replaced by technology but we still need you in this thing but you got to learn this software you see so i'm still giving you job security peer pressure yeah peer don't change it if they don't do it we're going to keep the old way no yeah you have to say it. there's no going back the organization if you don't take the training you don't learn the training you have will train you once twice third time you no longer have the skill sets needed for this job and peer pressure is there but you have to say it doesn't make a difference anyone who doesn't do this we will just have to hire a new workforce that has the skill set and after a while I say, I'm not listening to that to that individual uh, uh, the company still managed the uh, the work process the management is still responsible for the tools given the management is looking at the major direction but the peer pressure is out there disruption a cultural tradition and group relationship we work in teams as according to maslow and herzberg people like our social animals that's why uh, business everything else under the social science we're social animals or social beings we're not animals we're higher than animals but the social beings we like to work with people once i make those connections and now i'm working in another group I've, i'm changed because the, these individuals are, are reassigned here and i'm reassigned there sometimes you may take a job you, you offer if you want to stay with the group you have to take a demotion so we'll cut your pay or you go to the new one that's something you have to look at <coughs> you know, make new friends you're gonna make new uh, relationship so that's why you have the team building Personality conflicts. The trainer or the organization may have personality. Or the process, you may say, i got to work with him now. i never worked with him before or her. You have to say, hey, you're working here. I'm paying you a fee. You respect the individual. You may not like that person. I'm not telling you to go out and socialize with the person and in the business. It's all professional. It's all respect. I'm paying you a task for a service. That person is in that process. You have to be able to do that. Now you have personality conflict. You may like the manager who's doing it. So a lot of times they'll bring outside consultants to do the change because I have no connection to anything with the man. I don't know the process it. So you could focus on the change and the task at hand. So remember, so consultants uh, have a, a, well, you see why they bring consultants. They know the process. They're more people as individuals. They're not doing with the uh, old. They have no clue about the old. They're just showing you the new. And people say, okay, they don't know anything about that, but let's learn this new process. That's why I'm going to spend eight hours with him or her. Lack of tack or poor timing. 
look, you're not going to say we're empowering everyone after I laid off half the workforce or fired the half of the workforce, and now we're going to be all empowered. You have we enlarge your job. That's poor timing. You're doing a reorganization, new titles. Even though the jobs are enlarged, you have a new focus because it's no longer the same job I have. I have a new title, a new desk, a new layout. Uh, and if you do have a massive uh, uh, reorganization, don't leave all those empty seats. Well, poor Sally used to be here. Or that good George, you rearrange it so it looks like it's a whole new process to come in in a new organization. So remember, poor timing, lack of uh, timing, non-reinforcing rewards. Once I have the new process in, my whole new reward system. Like it or not, people are motivated by the dollars. They like the new job, the empowerment, that's all intrinsic, but now this whole big change. Will I make as much now that they cut my overtime and they say uh, 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 I get rewarded, but not overtime, but how much sales I make or uh, how quickly or quality of work, whatever. The goals have to be tied to the new process for it to be, you know, that's part of the solidification because now i got to find out and the goals got to be achi achi uh, uh, achievable. The new goals coming out there should be not as strict as the old goals where the people already had all the processes changes. Remember, step. So they had, they're still used to the new system, so don't make it that hard. After they know the system, next year when you have the new goals, you tighten them up a little because now they're very comfortable and now I can see if they best, you know, otherwise they never meet the goals. They go, I knew this new system doesn't work. Look, no one can make that money. Do you see what I'm talking about? Use your head. Tidy. Slow steps. And remember, it's like anything else. My goal when I first start running is maybe 20 miles. After that, uh, well, let's say 5 miles. Okay, 5 miles. After that, it's 10 miles. So the next time I go for the marathon, it's a longer marathon. You see, so I can make those goals achievable while I'm learning the first process. And then after I get my confidence, then I can do, uh, uh, make the goals a little bit tighter. Okay, where a lot of people make the same goals tighter, but you have a whole new system. I don't know how to work the system. I'm still learning. I'm not going to achieve those goals because I got to figure out. I got to type this. Where did this go before? Boom, 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 boom. I do it right away. Okay. Now, overcoming uh, change. This is one that you're looking at. Remember, I don't care. Commitment to change. First of all, a mindset, whatever it takes to effectively implement the change. You have to understand the mindset of your audience. What is their commitment? How do I convince them? I can force them. But I want them to buy into the process. Remember, forcing them, I'm just going to get compliance. They're just going to do enough to keep you off their back. If I could get them, sell them. My background is marketing and management. If I could get them to buy into the idea, yes, I could see uh, there's a, a higher reward, less stress, new technology. I've got new skill sets that, I, that are transferable skill sets. If I don't like the company here, I could go someplace else. I don't tell them that, but in their mind, I could say, you know, something happens if we get bought out or if uh, whatever happens, uh, you know, you know I mean, uh, and you like the new merger, you've got a, 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 or even if we got brought out, you've got another company that's buying us out, you've got transferable skill sets that could go a, a, anywhere else. Okay? Provides, that's why college is a lot of times a good thing, uh, uh, a lot of workshops, because you have either, there's some transferable, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, 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 skill sets that you have. Provide as much information as possible to the employees about the change. you got to tell them why, when, where, how it's going to go, and how's the training, support them. Yeah, you could do it. I think of uh, a new kid, uh, my grandson is a, is a tricycle, and i got to uh, teach you to ride on a two-wheeler. You've got the other small little wheel. I don't like it because tricycle is easy, sits down. I said, hey, you could go fast. You could go in with Jaja, that means uh, 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 grandfather in Polish, on a bike uh, trail. You could ride along. You Look at all your friends, your older friends. You're all riding with two wheelers. You could drive all over the grass. Now, the mindset. I want to learn now. I know it's going to be hard, so I'll, I'll, I'm hanging on to you. I'm slowly doing it before I take those training wheels off. Uh, uh, conduct meetings to address employees' concerns back and forth, you know, uh, all levels. Well, how's it going to affect me? What do I need to do? You know, they, they all need that, and you should have those answers. You should understand the process. Usually the process design, or, or the manager, the supervisor, they trust the first line supervisors first, get them on board, then the middle manager, and senior manager, they trust. You don't see them as much. So you know, if you don't see someone, you don't have that relationship building the president of the company as you do as your first line and middle managers, because we're most participative managers or small business owners. They know they trust me. Uh, you know, you know, they know if I'm telling the truth or not by the way I look or anything else because they got that relationship. Provide employees an opportunity to discuss how to propose change by effective. Open communication. You have to, uh, you have to take that, okay? 
okay, so now here's the 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 the, the crest of uh, of uh, how to bring change in. The first one, education, lack of information. So if I don't have education, so I'm fearful about the change, or they're going to ramp something down my throat. So I educate them. Here's the training. That's the training. I communicate. The next one after education, I go to participation. Initiators do not have all the facts, or the uh, 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 do not have all of the facts. So the new individuals I'm training, they may not have all the facts. So I have them participate. Try this new software. Look at this new classroom. Look at this new layout. You know, get them involved into it. Bring them into some of the uh, process change or into the training. Facilitate the support. Adjust to the problems. Remember, I have a problem. Hmm, it didn't come up there. It shouldn't work that way. Oh, let's make some adjustments. I'm not doing major changes to the process. I'm tweaking it. You know, it's like you're making a cake, ladies or gentlemen who are cooking. Man, it needs a little more salt. Even though I put the one teaspoon in, but I put more water or my taste for my family, maybe a little more salty or a little oh, too salty, add more water, whatever. You see I me? Mean? I'm tweaking it, so make the adjustment. The other one is negotiation and agreement. Some groups will lose. you got to say, yes, I understand. Some process that department is no longer needed, it's replaced, or it's obsolete, but I'm retraining you for another one. There's nothing I could do back. I know you're hurt, you're sorry, you did all the training, but technology took it over, it's more effective, efficient, and this is what the customers want, so let's go over here. All right? So, uh, And some of it I could negotiate. Okay? Manipulation and cooperation. Other tactics do not work. I try to manipulate them. Here, you do this, uh, I promise you this. That's not really, that's the last resort. Manipulation is, is uh, it always backfires. But it's a process that some people may have to be coerced, for lack of better words, uh, manipulated a little bit. The last one, explicit and implicit, speed the need. Explicit and implicit coercion. It means, hey, I'm not going to, you're going to do it, I'm going to fire you. There's no way about it. That's my last resort. I want your education. I want your participation. I want your facilitation. I try to negotiate. I try to manipulate a little. I'll give you a little reward here or there. Finally, it says, uh, we're going to the change. You like it? Lead the organization. Not, uh, we're going to the disciplinary models. You will learn this. No way, no going back. That is my last thing. Remember when I, uh, those of you had me some kind of leadership uh, uh, seminars or some of my leadership classes that I teach, when I'm looking at it, mine is I'm a participative manager. I try to look at everything else, bring involvement, everything else. But there's that 5% or 10%. The only thing you're going to know is you do it or I fire you. I turn from participative to that one with the horns, the uh, autocratic, the mean type of manager. You will do this or I'm firing you. Lead my lips. I'm watching you. Last resort. And those individuals, after a while, they're always going to be like that. Eventually, they won't like the system. They'll leave or they'll take a buyout to nutrition or they'll promote out of the department. I can't. Or some out of that 5%. Maybe 2 3% will see the light, and they'll basically, uh, for lack of better words, they'll adjust and say, hey, this isn't a bad process. After I force them and they learn it, they end up being my stars. And everyone's going, Terry, what the heck are you doing? You hated it. I know, but once I got to use it, this is really easy. I like this. Look, I'm meeting more people. I got new skill set. I enjoyed it. Remember? You don't know, but sometimes you got to, you know, you, uh, put that... Uh, 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 fear in their heart. That shouldn't be the, that. You don't start off with the fear. That's your last resort. Okay? Because a lot of times I can convince people are very rational. But you have that unrational individual. Okay? So I got overcoming. So let's see. We had this one. And now this last one, creating a learning organization. Everything comes in here is a learning organization. We are constantly learning, adjusting. I get a speeding ticket. I know I've got a speeding ticket. I'm not a speeder. I drive a lot. If I got a ticket, because over. I wasn't paying attention, listening to music or whatever. I got the ticket. Next time I'm, oh, uh, you know, for the next few months, okay, drive slow. Look at the speed limit. You know, I do something else. So I'm always learning. Or how do I address the police officer or, or somebody when I get, uh, sometimes I get in a conflict. And after conflict, it, it warns up. I get embarrassed. I got in a fight. I didn't handle that situation well. I'm learning. A company also has to learn to adjust to the environment because that's how we're going to survive. Remember we talked about organic and mechanistic organization? Mechanistic is a machine. I am a robot. Only do it this way. Very structured. I can't move. It takes too long. I've got to replace the whole arm. Organic, a flower. It adjusts to the weather. It adjusts to, if it's cold, it shrivels down. If it's warm, it grows. It, the external and internal uh, 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 forces basically help me grow. So learning capability. To learning capability, an 
enabled the organization to adapt to its environment. That's what a learning organization, as that flower, it adapts. Some, you know, look at a, a you got some uh, insects or bees, some not adapting. You see there's a bee population going down because we're putting too much p uh, pesticide and the bees we need for pollen for the food chain. So some of them don't adapt to the uh, to that, others adapt. Look at some bug. I sprayed them with Raid for, that I had for five years ago and now they've adapted a chemical. Oh, that kind of smells good. I move along. So I have to adapt. Companies have to adapt to the surrounding. Okay? Set of core companies, internal processes, product, uh, pro, uh, proactively creates, acquires, transfers knowledge throughout the organization. If one process found that it's not working, you share that knowledge. Not, well, it's only my department, so I make the goal. We're a whole. The arm, if something happens here, lets the other arm know, hey, look out for this. I'm just, you know, we're one big, we're one body, one entity. That's one organization. We should share knowledge. Here's what's going on. My sales for it. See, my competitor's doing that. I transfer that information to my sales, to my marketing. I didn't realize that. I may get my feeders out there, but my internal customers are, uh, they got other contacts and they're getting information in. That's learning capability, sharing knowledge that's new. Okay? I can't stress that. Okay. Uh, facilitating factors, supportive learning environment. I have someplace I'll suggestion boxes, some kind of feedback, what's new out there. Something that, you know, if a customer's in the call center is complaining about that. After a while, I'm looking, I got so many complaints. Why are they complaining about this? That means they're unhappy with this product, they may not come back to my store or buy other products. Let's, uh, let's look at this thing. Could we change this process? That's how I'm learning, adapting. Leadership then reinforces. I come in on a workshop, I come back, I'm always doing some changing. And people who used to work for me would always know, if George Go someplace else, he's going to implement some little, not the whole massive, some little portion of that new learning. That's how you become because they see George is learning. How do I get a promotion when I'm doing my performance reviews? What kind of changes? What new learning have you uh, come back or what, what could you change into the process? In your own little world, what do you think will make uh, it, it uh, uh, more effective, more efficient to meet the organizational uh, goals and objectives? And if that works here, could I use that same little tweaking to other products, and then they share that uh, outside to the other individuals within the uh, company. Okay, now I look at learning mode. Various ways in which organizations attempt to create and maximize their learning. Analytical, systematic, experimental, interactive, structural, and institutional. All those are different learning modes or processes for training that I'm changing the processes yeah, yeah, uh, or how I, I view uh, uh, every situation. And uh, if I look for a in lack of better words, if you look at a SWOT analysis, strength, weakness, opportunity, and trends. Anything I'm doing, I always look at strength, weakness, opportunities, and trends. What's the threat? What's the weakness of this process? Uh, how can I change it? And if I change it, it's an opportunity for me to uh, grow within the organization or the organization get a new market that they, we didn't have before or a new product line or reduce our expenses that gives us more profitability to reinvest within the company so we as an organization as whole grow. As we grow, then I have more opportunities for my individuals to grow up uh, within the organization because I hire internal and external and that uh, helps the morale and I can pay them more because I got more customers because uh, of this process change and their little tweaks through the whole organization, little tweaks, 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 tweaks and next thing I have a new uh, company. If you look at the benchmarking organization, the companies that we're benchmarking, that well, we want to be like IBM, we want to be like uh, uh, Microsoft, we want to be like Apple. I don't care which couple, whoever they're benchmarking and what that, uh, uh, you know, each companies have uh, what they call a core competency that uh, companies look for. Even though they may have smaller uh, uh, markets, there's the main core one that people say, I want to be like them. I want their customers. How do they got, uh, get there? They get there because every employee, good communication, we're a learning organization. We adapt quickly. You know, that's what, if I look at the iPhone, what's the new thing? It's not with the tablets, everything else. It's the wearable. People want something small, quickly. I could look at my phone. They want things that monitor it. Could, there's a need for it. And now I'm adapting to my customers and the technology is there. Uh, and so how do I adapt? If I look at the batteries, the basic batteries, now we have uh, hybrid cars. So how do I adapt the old lead with acid type of battery to be more environmentally stay, uh, safe, but uh, utilize solar power to recharge it otherwise plus with the generator what other ways do I that battery is now a complex computerized battery that takes uh, uh, sources other than an alternator to uh, uh, to store up the energy so I could drive uh, longer uh, on an electric power car and uh, uh, more effectively more efficiently going forward
Grammar Learning Organization. So if I look at this chapter, and I think I covered them all, when we look at what we covered today, we're looking at, and I'm going to uh, uh, just uh, summarize everything else. So the biggest thing that you have to look at, forces of changes are there. Look at the model, unfreeze the old. Put the new model in. I mean, you got processes in there. Uh, uh, get the uh, buy-in and then refreeze it through uh, uh, pr procedures, processes, and reward systems. You know, uh, uh, steps to leading organizational change, organizational development. They could be inside or within. Remember, you have to look at the individuals doing the training. It has to be credible. Someone could adjust to different uh, cultures, different uh, ways of uh, learning style. Everyone's taking information. And you have to find out what's important to that individual. Not what I think. Here's the company, but why is it important for me it's your job security it's your training it's your reward system it's to feed your family whatever all those are process I have it understand why people resist change and if I understand why they resist change I could say here's I know most people are afraid of new change with the software so was I but look it's not too bad and I show them how it works Overcoming resistance through education, through communication, through bringing people in, to getting feedback, to let them know what to change, to tweaking the system. All right? And then basically you're a learning organization. So that takes care of it for changing organizations and, uh, going forward <coughs> by becoming a learning organization. My name is Dr. George Machaki, and I hope you enjoyed this uh, session. It's about 30 minutes, but it's well worth it. If you're utilizing this, whether as a company for a large uh, uh, organization, uh, you know, to get the strategic uh, change. But remember, you have to go down to the middle managers or the first line to every individual. If you're a department head and you just want to change the way your department's looking at, make sure you have the focus and you're looking at the department or a first line supervisor. You're utilizing all these same procedures and always what's the benefit to the employees, what's the benefit to the company, to my stockholders, or to my, all, all my stakeholders. Again, my name is Dr. George Bachaki and have a pleasant day.